Nike wants to just do it. Adidas to create the best product. But what does Puma stand for? Puma recently signed some exciting sponsorship deals. Manchester City, Lamello Ball and now Neymar. The brand seems committed to attack its rivals, Adidas and Nike, by aggressively investing into high-profile athletes and teams. And it looks like the strategy is working. Before COVID-19, Puma was the world's fastest growing sportswear brand. The company almost doubled its revenue within five years, increasing its sales twice as fast as market leader Nike. It's been a dream always to be able to work with a brand like Puma. We'll explain the strategy behind that growth and why it's all about finding the right balance between sportswear and fashion. To understand Puma as a company, it's worth looking at its roots. The story of the Dassler brothers, who started a shoe factory in their small German hometown of Herzogenaurach, is famous by now. Within the first few years, Dassler footwear became renowned worldwide. Many medal winners at the Olympics wore Dassler shoes. Almost 30 years after founding the company, the Dassler brothers fell out and went separate ways. Adolf created Adidas, but only after his brother Rudolf had founded Puma. The following years, Puma was shaped by legendary athletes that helped to grow the business. In 1958, the Brazilian team took home the Football World Cup, wearing Puma boots. It was also the year that the second brand logo was patented, the form strip, originally created to stabilize the foot inside the shoe. The logo quickly came to prominence, thanks to the rise of mass media and the broadcasting of major sports events. For example, when the world's fastest man, Armin Hari, won gold at the Olympics in Rome. You guessed it, in Puma Spikes. But the most important Puma ambassador throughout the years was probably Pelé. After the victory in 58, he went on to win two more World Cups with Brazil and established Puma as one of the leading sports performance brands. The first athlete that pushed the brand more into a lifestyle direction was Walt Clyde Frazier. He made a name for himself off the court with his colorful style. When he approached Puma and asked for a custom-made pair of sneakers, Puma took the chance and launched the Puma Clyde. The model became a success in the hip-hop subculture. New York City Breakers and the Rocksteady Crew, all original pioneers of music and dance, broke new ground and set a craze of battles across the world to this day. It was the first proof for Puma that there was a lifestyle market for their products. But it would take decades before this insight would become a key part of their strategy. They first kept their focus on being a core sports brand. And their athletes gave Puma the needed credibility. Boris Becker, the youngest player ever winning Wimbledon in 85, or Diego Maradona, one year later at the FIFA World Cup, helped to put Puma in the limelight. But despite the athletic success, Puma struggled by the early 90s. The company had been operating in the red since it went public in 86. It was more and more regarded as an unattractive and cheap brand that was found at rummage sales. Formerly second behind Adidas, Puma had fallen back to fourth place in terms of sales. In came a new CEO who turned things around. He took aim at Puma's brand image. From then on, Puma consistently focused on fashion and lifestyle products in addition to pure sporting goods. It had long been overlooked that most customers bought sport shoes as fashion items. The company would form collaborations with international designers, cut its clothing into haute couture and presented it on the Paris catwalks. As one of the first sports brands, Puma merged sports and fashion by collaborating with star designer Jane Sander. Lifestyle versions of football and running shoes were launched and suddenly Puma was the market leader in that segment. The strategy worked. In 94, Puma made the highest profit in the company's history to that date. The focus on lifestyle climaxed when French luxury goods corporation Curring bought into Puma and became the majority shareholder. Now Puma was under the same roof as luxury fashion brands Gucci or Saint Laurent. Unfortunately, the hype around Puma as a lifestyle brand didn't last very long. The strong focus on fashion had damaged Puma's credibility as a sporting goods manufacturer. Although Puma managed to leave their mark by signing Usain Bolt and Scuderia Ferrari, the company failed to commercialize the success and revenue stagnated or fell until 2013. 
With its roots in sports, but years of focusing rather on fashion, the brand was missing a consistent purpose. Again, a new CEO had to find the answer. Björn Gulden presented a new brand positioning for the company in 2013. Under the mission statement, Forever Faster, Puma aims to become the fastest sports brand in the world, focusing strongly on the sports categories of football, running and training, golf and motorsports. The most important words of the statement are sports brand. Puma is hoping the strategic shift brings a more performance-based edge to its lifestyle products and changes the perception of the brand. Golden wants Puma to return to being a sports company rather than a fashion-led lifestyle business. How does that look in practice? Puma unified its sportswear and lifestyle divisions. Those divisions were run separately before, which confused both customers and suppliers. So instead of working next to or even against each other, the sportswear and lifestyle teams unified their forces and worked together. And the Forever Faster strategy also explains Puma's selection of athletes and teams. Usain Bolt and the Jamaican national team, Formula One and lately of course Neymar. Not to say that they only sign fast athletes now, but at least that's the overarching strategy and purpose of the brand. Puma quickly had to realize how difficult it can be to gain back their credibility as a sports brand. When they announced plans to get back into basketball in 2018, they failed to sign a high-profile player. It is the week of the NBA draft. And who is dominating the headlines but Puma? They joined forces with Jay-Z as a creative director and leveraged their former athlete Walt Frazier. The fact that they were able to sign one of the biggest names in the music business, but not a single significant basketball player shows how much the brand got off track. But the signing of Lamello Ball in 2020 shows that they are on the way back to sports. But despite these obstacles, Puma is quite successful with the strategy. With 5.5 billion euros, the company achieved its highest sales ever in 2019. The struggle for the right balance between sports and fashion brand runs through Puma's history. The two poles have been the reason for Puma's biggest successes, as well as its biggest challenges. It seems that Puma just hasn't found the right balance yet. But if they do, they might gain further ground against Adidas and Nike. Having Manchester City, Lewis Hamilton and Neymar on your side will probably not hurt.